clear and does not mince words. We have come to take our country back. We've come to take our country back from the special interests that use Washington as their personal piggy bank. The special interests that are more concerned with their personal welfare than the general welfare. The Washington machine that gobbles up our freedoms and invades every nook and cranny of our lives must be stopped. All right, joining us now is James Kerchick, correspondent for the Daily Beast and fellow at the Foreign Policy Institute. James, welcome back. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Mr. Uh, Rand Paul, and uh, how is he going to walk this uh, this line uh, between you know it, uh, his libertarian views and, and and you know thrilling his libertarian supporters, and you know his uh, his policies that go along with that towards Iran, Israel, the the, the war on terror, etc. I think it's going to be difficult because I think at the end of the day the Republican Party is largely a party of national security hawks. And Ron Paul, sorry, Rand Paul, is not very popular with that crowd. And as I just indicated in my staking him for his father, I think um, a lot of voters are going to have trouble distinguishing him from his father as well. Um, in particular, his father's rather um, out there beliefs uh, in terms of international politics. I mean, uh, Ron Paul, former congressman and presidential candidate, himself is a uh, he's a frequent guest on you know Russian propaganda television um, a real apologist for the Russians and while Rand Paul himself hasn't you know gone out there on so far a limb um, he's also been sort of dabbling in that sort of ideology I would say um, ridiculing uh, the more hawkish members of his party for being stuck in a Cold War mindset for instance when it comes to Ukraine um, yeah, he seems to be balancing this in a very difficult manner because um, then he's also come out and criticized uh, President Obama for uh, withdrawing our missile defense systems from Poland in the Czech Republic. So he really seems to want to have it both ways. He tries to appeal to both the hawks in the party but also the more isolationist libertarian sentiment as well. And I don't know how long he's going to be able to fool people like this. Well, I, that's a great point. And you can, in, the, in the end, you cannot have it both ways. But assuming right. he were to become the nominee, which is a huge assumption and a big leap, yeah. um, and, and ran against Hillary, uh, I, I think you, uh, you know, she, she might be the, the more, although she's a total failure, it, a, in my view, takes away that advantage that the Republicans would have in going after her foreign policy record. And B, she would appear to be the more hawkish, I think, of the two. I think that's absolutely true, and um, you have to remember a lot of hawkish voters went for Bill Clinton in 1992. They saw him actually as being uh, tougher um, on our adversaries than they did George H.W. Bush in that election. So this wouldn't be the first time that um, sort of hawkish uh, intellectuals and whatnot supported a, a Clinton. Um, but as you said, I think it is a long shot that Rand Paul gets this. I just think that his foreign policy views are far out of the mainstream, let alone the Republican mainstream. Um, and I think he's going to have a real difficult time threading this needle. And what about uh, uh, governors? I mean, how, how tough is it for governors to, to build up foreign policy cred? Are you talking about Scott Walker yeah, in particular? Scott, or just yeah, well, Scott general? Walker, I mean, Jeb, I mean, uh, Jeb Bush, even uh, Chris Christie, I mean, any, any, yeah. any governor who might want to throw his hat in the ring, I mean, how do they become, you know, foreign policy worthy, if you will? Well, I don't think it's actually that difficult. And if you look, I mean, it's actually rare that you get senators to be presidents. I mean, most of our presidents That's over true. the last 30 or 40 yep. years Very have true. been governors. And it's not, it's not that hard for them to bone up on their foreign policy chops. Usually there's some time in between when they leave office and when they run for president, they spend a lot of that time traveling the world, going on these, these fact-finding missions. I know Mitt Romney did a lot of that in between his stint as governor of Massachusetts and running for president, and other candidates have done the same. Um, they do, you know, and also when you're governor, you are exposed, uh, or you can choose to be exposed to the world, largely through trade. Um, most states have, you know, very vigorous trade promotion offices, departments, um, and they're you know they're actively going abroad trying to drum up foreign investment um, in their in their state. 
Um, so I don't think that being a governor is necessarily a hindrance uh, in, in the foreign policy yeah, field. And Carly Fiorina uh, has told me uh, that, uh, you know, she's met world leaders, traveled around the world, sat down with Putin and others uh, in her right. capacity as, a, you know, a CEO and a, and a head of a major corporation. So I guess there are all, are all kinds of ways uh, to, to get that done. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, Certainly as a business yeah, executive. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, certainly as, as, as a business executive, um, you, would, you, would gain, you would gain a lot of experience in that field as well. Yeah. All right. Always good to talk to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. All right. My pleasure. All right. Um, you know, folks, it's a, it's a very good question. It's going to be very interesting as more and more uh, candidates announce, uh, you know, to see, um, you know, the, the Marco Rubio and to see, uh, you know, whoever else uh, weighs in next. I don't know if it's going to be Rubio on the Republican side next. I think it, there's a chance that it might be him next. Uh, but nonetheless, um, the foreign policy foreign policy is is going to be very important in this election and it could have been bigger last election but I don't think that Mitt Romney handled it properly and certainly didn't go after uh, Obama you know as much as he should have um, you know with Russia and especially with Benghazi and let Candy Crowley uh, distort what was said so uh, you need a Republican nominee who has the right foreign policy and the right credentials to go after Hillary, who has been a miserable failure, in my view, on foreign policy. You know, so what can I tell you?